Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at complex conjugates of complex numbers so we can answer questions from exercise 1D. What this video will also lead us on to is dividing complex numbers, one complex number by another. So let's first look at what a complex conjugate is. A complex conjugate is basically the same complex number but the imaginary part has the sign flipped. So um, if we have one complex number that's a plus bi, then the complex conjugate, which is represented by a z with a star above it, I've also seen it be represented with a bar above it as well, uh, is equal to a minus bi. So the real part stays the same. The imaginary part just has its sign flipped or, or negated. So if it's a positive imaginary part, it's now a negative imaginary part. But if it was already a negative imaginary part, it would now be a positive imaginary part. So just change the sign of the imaginary part. So writing down the complex conjugate of 2 plus 3i, that would just be as simple as writing down 2 minus 3i. We're going to use this in dividing complex numbers later on. 5 minus 2i will have a complex conjugate of 5 plus 2i. And 1 minus i root 5 would have a complex conjugate of 1 plus i root 5. Okay, now let's have a look at this complex number here. z equals 2 minus 7i. We want to find z plus z star, the complex conjugate, and z times by the complex conjugate of itself. So for part a, we need to add the two parts of the complex conjugate together. So adding the real parts together and adding the imaginary parts together, we're just going to get 4, because as you can see, every time it's going to work out that you'll have one part positive, one part negative on the imaginary parts, and they'll just always cancel each other out. So effectively all you need to do here is double the real part. For zz star, what's going to happen is we're going to times our two complex numbers together, so it's 2 minus 7i times 2 plus 7i, so multiplying out the brackets as we normally would, we're going to get 4 minus 14i, so plus 14i, minus 14i down below, and then minus 49i squared. And you can see here as well, the imaginary part is always going to be one positive, one negative, because we're always going to have one positive, one negative um, when we're multiplying a complex number by its complex conjugate. So these two are always going to cancel out. So what we're left with here is 4, replacing the i squared with minus 1, so it's 4 plus 49, and it will give us 53. Okay, so effectively here you could think of it as just square the real part, square the imaginary part, and then add them together so you get 53. So you can see here that multiplying and adding together these two complex numbers here both gives us imaginary, sorry, real parts only. It doesn't give us any imaginary parts, which is quite interesting. And that fact is always true when you try and add together z and z star and z and z star, multiplying them together. All right, then, let's have a go at this question here. Then, very similar question, we're adding together the complex number and its conjugates, and then we're multiplying the complex number and its conjugates. With some difficult uh, numbers here, 2 root 2 and i root 2. So z stars, obviously, 2 root 2 minus i root 2. So adding the two values together first, you can obviously see here we've got one real part, one, sorry, one positive part, one negative part. So those two cancel out. Now adding together 2 root 2 and 2 root 2, we just get 4 root 2. So once again, purely real, no imaginary parts here. And then multiplying them together, well, this is going to be a little bit difficult because we've got 2s and root 2s multiplying together. So bear with us here. So 2 root 2 times 2 root 2 is going to give us uh, 4 root 4, which is effectively 8. Uh, 2 root 2 times minus i root 2 will give us 2i root 4. Uh, i root 2 times 2 root 2 will give us 2i root 4. And then 
i root 2 times minus i root 2 will give us minus i squared times root 4. So the root 4 comes from multiplying the root 2 times root 2. You can multiply thirds together. So here, simplifying this all down, we'll have one part here that will cancel out with that part there. We'll have a minus 1 as this part here. To square root of 4 is 2, and then it's a negative value. So it's 8 from the 4 root. 4 root 4 is equal to 2, so 4 times 2 is 8. And then simplifying this all down, we get 10. Okay, so 10 here, purely real. Once again, no imaginary parts because we, we won't get any imaginary answers when we work out these two calculations here. It will always cancel out due to the nature of how we've made the conjugates. Right, let's see if we can now use the complex conjugate to divide these two complex numbers by each other. Uh, with division, you'll need to think um, about multiplying the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate. Um, this is effectively the same technique that you use when you rationalise denominators in GCSE maths. If you can think of what you would do if the i was just a square root of 2, and the square root of 2 on the bottom, it would obviously be times top and bottom by 1 minus 2 root 2. Uh, effectively, the same is going to happen here. So what we do is we take the bottom complex number and we times the top and bottom of our complex number, of our, of our uh, division, by 1 minus 2i. Um, let me just show you something that doesn't work. You can't just divide... like that. You can't just do the real part of your complex number divided by each other and then the imaginary parts divided by each other. That there is 100% wrong. You need to divide complex numbers in this way that we're about to go through here. So what we need to do here is effectively rationalize the bottom or create a real number that's going to go on the bottom of these two numbers here. So 1 minus 2i when we times 1 plus 2i by 1 minus 2i, that's going to give us a real value. That's effectively the same as z times z star, which will give us a real value. But we don't want to change the value of this complex number here, so we have to times the same thing on the top. And if you times the top and bottom of a fraction by the same value, you keep the fraction equivalent. Now all that's left for us to do is to do two expanding brackets of complex numbers, one for the top and one for the bottom. So 10 plus 5i will have to expand with 1 minus 2i, and 1 plus 2i will have to expand with 1 minus 2i. It's always the denominator you look at and times the complex conjugate by on the top and bottom. So let's do it then. Let's expand the brackets. We'll get 10 minus 20i plus 5i minus 10i squared, and on the bottom we'll get 1 minus 2i plus 2i minus 4i squared. And let's simplify what we've got on the top then and the bottom using i squared as equal to minus 1. So this is going to give us minus 1 here and minus 1 here. Um, the 5 and the minus 20 will simplify to minus 15i. And we'll simplify the terms here and give us 20 minus 15i over 5. Now that we've got a real value on the bottom, what we can do here is split this up. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Minus 15i divided by 5 is minus 3. So the answer here is 4 minus 3i. That is how you divide two complex numbers. You times the top and bottom by the complex conjugates and then simplify. Let's have a go at another one here then. So 5 plus 4i, 2 minus 3i. Pause the video if you want to have a go at this one. I'm going to go through it now. So what you need to do then is take the denominator and times the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate here. So 2 plus 3i this will become and 2 plus 3i on the bottom. This will effectively create a real number on the denominator here, and then we can divide the real part by that denominator and the imaginary part by that denominator. We times the top and the bottom by 2 plus 3a because we don't actually want to change the value of the complex number, but we want to simplify it in such a way that we have a real part on the denominator. So 
let's go ahead and now multiply these two complex numbers on the top and the two complex numbers on the bottom. So expanding the brackets very carefully, you'll get 10 plus 15i plus 8i plus 12i squared. And on the bottom, you'll get 4 minus 6i plus 6i minus 9i squared. Now it's always going to be the case that you see these i's here, they're always going to cancel out. 6i and minus 6i will cancel out, and that will always get rid of any imaginary parts that are on our denominator. The i squared will obviously simplify to a minus 1, and we can simplify the top as well. Grouping together the i's and changing the i squared to a minus 1, and then grouping together 10 and minus 12 give us minus 2. Grouping together 8i and 15i will give us 23i. And grouping together 4, add 9 will give us 13. So we could effectively leave our answer like this. Another way you could leave your answer is to split it up into a real part here <clears throat> by dividing by 15, so 13, and an imaginary part here by dividing. 23 by 13 here. So your final answer to this question here is minus 2 over 13 plus 23 over 13 i. I personally think that this way here is a much nicer way of leaving your answer. It clearly defines the real parts and the imaginary parts separately. All right, and so your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. Pause the video and try them out. All right, then let's have a go at the first one here then. So 5 minus 3i, and what we're going to need to do is times the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So 1 minus 3i. So it's going to be 1 plus 3i times 1 minus 3i on the denominator. And that's to make the denominator turn into a real part. So we're going to get 3 minus 9i minus 5i plus 15i squared divided by uh, 1 minus 3i plus 3i minus 9i squared. Now let's simplify the top here. We're going to get minus 14i and this is going to turn into a minus 15 because we've got an i squared on it. So 3 minus 15 will give us minus 12. On the denominator here, we're going to have 1. And then it's going to be the 3i and the minus 3i will cancel. That will always happen. So i squared is going to be minus 1. So we're going to have 1 plus 10. So that will make it 11. So 1 plus 9, which will make it 10. We can cancel down factors of 2 here, so it would be minus 6 over 5, minus 7 over 5i, splitting them into their real parts and their imaginary parts. Let's just use a calculator to make sure we've got that one right. Minus 6 over 5, minus 7 over 5i, great, we've got that one correct. Let's have a look at this one here. So phrased in a slightly different way, but really all we need to do to turn this into a standard problem is to times both sides by z. So times the z on the bottom of this left-hand fraction here onto the right, and then divide by 2 minus i. So 5 plus 2i divided by 2 minus i is equal to z. And now we can find out the answer to z. So what we need to do here is take the denominator and times by its complex conjugate on the top and on the bottom. This will still equal z. So on the denominator here, so on the numerator here, we're going to get 10 plus 5i plus 4i plus 2i squared over 4 plus 2i minus 2i minus i squared. 
this is still equal to z. So on the denu on the numerator here, we're going to have uh, this i squared is going to be a minus one, so that's minus two. Ten take away two is eight, plus nine i over two uh, i, and then minus two i will cancel. This i squared will turn into a minus one here, but it will be minus minus one, so that'll make it plus one. So that'll make four plus one is five. So our final answer here is going to be eight over five plus 9 over 5i, and that is what our value of z is. Okay, so that's how we do these questions here from exercise 1d. So pause the video, have a go at lots of these questions here from exercise 1d. There's lots of little places that people trip up on, so making sure that you get in these 100% correct all the time will be really important. All right then, thanks very much for watching this video.